Hi everyone, welcome again in the MVC5 tutorial from the Open Education channel. I am Siddharth Sankar Mishra. In the previous tutorial, we covered the basics of ASP.NET MVC framework. Now from here, we will see the other features of MVC with our demo lecture project. So create a new MVC application, create a new project. Under the Visual Studio, select Web and make sure .NET Framework 4.5. Select ASP.NET Web Application. Give it a name Lecture MVC and hit OK. Select MVC and hit OK. Now again here Visual Studio gives us the MVC basic project folder structure. So it is creating our project lecture MVC and see here it is uh, adding the project dependencies like bootstrap files, uh, jQuery files and other dependencies so this is our uh, project that Visual Studio created for us first we will cover the models and the entity framework we know our models are inside the model folder here by default we have account views model and identity model we know that the model represents the data of our application and the entity framework is the data access technology developed by Microsoft. Entity framework is already added in the MVC application by default by Visual Studio. Here you can see the reference of entity framework. Here is the reference of Entity Framework in our application. So, Entity Framework gives us three ways to work with our data. That is a code first approach, database first approach, and model first approach. The database first approach is very simple, and as its name says, you know, you develop your database first and then work on it from your application. Now here in this tutorial, we will use the most recent approach provided by Entity Framework that was requested by the developers all around the world and that is the code first approach. In the code first, you write your data model as the simple C sharp classes and then Entity Framework generates a database based on your classes and that's very really cool feature. So let's create a model for our lecture application on the model folder, right click and click select add and then select class name it lecture and hit add and that's pretty cool because uh, at the end of the day your model is just a CSR class so it's a really cool feature and all you know see here it's just a regular C sharp class so let's add some properties in our uh, model so first of all we say uh, prop uh, it's a code snippet I will insert and it will say you know public int my property so public int lecture id you are a lecture id and you just have to you know write uh, prop prop and then hit the tab key twice like this and it will uh, generate the property for us now public string uh, subject sorry uh, string subject and uh, now 
public string lecture and then public date time lecture date so this is our uh, c sharp class so uh, now when the entity framework will uh, convert this class into a database you know it will make a table with the name of class that's lecture table with the you know th th these properties will uh, uh, convert it into the columns of that table so uh, now notice here I have uh, written the lecture ID now this will become our primary key because uh, this is the convention the the convention is that the class name plus ID or just simply ID if uh, entity framework would find this uh, this thing ID or class name plus ID it will uh, assume that this is the primary key of your table so now I will do a separate video lecture series on the entity framework after the completion of this video series so uh, and other remember that I said that uh, I said previously that the MVC makes your life whole lot easier as a developer by giving you uh, ability to do related things at one place so here in this model we can provide some additional metadata that will uh, help us a lot in future means here in our model we can do validation stuff of our application so ASP.NET gives us data annotations and we can validate our application straight from our model so we can identify what the data types gonna be and also we can perform validation as well so we apply annotation by simply writing attributes over the properties so uh, uh, let's say in our uh, in our model we can set the attribute for the lecture date as required so here just uh, above the lecture date we will uh, add required required and uh, here we can uh, yeah this annotation are in the system component model data annotations class so now uh, this will make uh, uh, our lecture date as a uh, required field uh, means it says that hey this field is required and if a user doesn't fill that field our you will show them uh, error and told them that hey user this is a required field so uh, now if you want uh, to show any custom error message then you can add a error message here that's a error message uh, that uh, what it is lecture day uh, lecture day is required so now this will uh, show a custom uh, message that hey this uh, the lecture date is required we can also set the data type for our models like here for the lecture date that uh, what kind of model uh, uh, data type it is so it is uh, a date time uh, data type so we can just uh, add an attribute just that data type is our data type dot date time and uh, Plus, uh, we can also set the, the display name for our, uh, uh, you know, for this property. So we can uh, set that uh, display, and uh, name will be. Uh, we can set the name that it's a lecture name. Lecture name. Let's also uh, set it required. Uh, required. Uh, same thing goes here. That's required. It's required. And uh, 
that's all uh, we will do another uh, separate uh, video on the data annotation in much details but the basic idea is that uh, you perform a data uh, annotation or the validation right here from your model and you have just to put the attributes uh, above on your properties so that was our model now uh, we'll create a contact that will act as a go between you know something between our c sharp environment and our backend database environment and it will uh, provide us a, the uh, communication between these two uh, environments means our contacts will translate all thing from our side to uh, back backend database side so make a class in our uh, models folder add a class and give it a name that lecture context add this class now uh, inherit this class from our uh, from db class db uh, sorry db context db context uh, import the uh, system the data the entity what this class will do you, you know it, it will act as a in between of between our c sharp environment and the database environment so when i need lecture this context is going to give me that lecture so let me make a c sharp property here that would give me lectures from the backend so again prop and uh, it will be db set and it's type of lecture and then the property name will be lectures now whenever i need uh, my uh, uh, my data from the database what i will do i will just make a an object of uh, my uh, lecture context class uh, at the place where uh, i will need that data and then after that making that context i will fetch that data from the database so this is how you work with the code first entity uh, code first approach in entity framework and data models in msc5 so in this tutorial we saw uh, how to use models in esp data and msc5 in the further lectures we will see how to work with msc controllers and views and other features so thanks for watching meet you again